Well, hello there. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Windows 286 on one of our 286 systems. Well, maybe even two of them. I have the 286 system I built myself, and then I have the PS2, which I got working. Both are 286s, so both can probably run this. And maybe in this video I can try to network two of them together as well and, uh, and see what I can do. So, for Windows 286, I got seven of these floppy disks. I don't know if we're going to need all of them, but let's get these loaded up and see what happens. Alright, well our first specimen is this here 286 that I put together in a different video. This is a 16 MHz AMD 286, and it be a perfect specimen to run Windows 286 on from our multiple floppy disks. I've never installed this before, or even used it before, so I'm just gonna go through the install process and see what it's like, see what happens. All right, let's get started by uh, turning our machine on first. Kind of hard to install anything with the machine being on. Let that um, let that boot up. You can see it's starting at 16 megahertz, and let's wait for it to boot into into DOS. And I assume we just use DOS in order to install Windows from there, so... Alright, DOS is booting up off of the... actually off of the hard drive, not off of the compact flash. The compact flash is extra storage, the hard drive is the main storage. So let's take our first floppy disk and see what happens. Let's see what's on our disk. Guessing I just run the setup. Yeah, I guess, guess just running setup is probably all I need here. Let's see what happens. Ooh, oh, here we go. Setup pairs windows run your computer. It detects everything. Uh, oh, I guess I could get a mouse. I don't have a mouse plugged in right now. I imagine I could install a mouse after we get everything already installed, so we'll worry about the mouse later. Let's just continue. I have Hymem installed. Blah blah blah, let me see what it says here. If you want to reconfigure your system to enhance front of windows, press E to exit setup, change your config sys, free the memory area. We, re we recommend do this. Alright, let's see what we need to do here. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure what I did was right, but I just went into config sys and removed IMEM, and now the Windows installer has it complain about that, so maybe it's going to install its own memory manager, or maybe I need to have like a boot menu or something with different config settings, where if I want to just use DOS, I use HiMem, or if I want to use Windows, I don't use HiMem, uh, Windows, the memory manager, but anyway, let's just install Windows, I guess. See, Windows is definitely fine. Let's see what we have here. This is the machine I might install it on later, an IBM PS2 Model 50, but this is obviously not one of them. Nor is it any of these other ones, so I guess I'm just going to go with AT compatible. This is just a 286, so do that. Doo -doo -doo. We have VGA, keyboard, and a mouse. Let's see what other mice we have here. Is this going to be a a serial mouse, so I guess Microsoft Mouse is probably okay. Though, I don't know if I want to use mouse systems mode, because I don't remember the mouse I'm using ones in Microsoft mode or in mouse systems mode, but I imagine it's something I can change later, so I'll just leave it the way it is. VGA is probably fine, pretty sure the Peter Card can handle that. And then, yeah, let's just install. What oh, we got here? Back to the extended memory stuff I was talking about. Windows can use extended memory. I think I can. Let's do it. Run that Windows installer.
Well, it took quite a while to copy stuff, but now it wants disc number two, a displays disc. So you got disc one, up in the displays disc number two. Here we go. Looks like maybe I could have just copied all these floppy disks onto the compact flash card or something and ran the installer from there, but it's not fun. It's fun to insert all the floppy disks and stand here and wait a long time while Windows installs because there's a lot of floppy disks. Um, I do not have a printer. United States. Utilities 2. That's interesting, that is disk number four. We're currently skipping disk number three. Maybe disk three was like the printer utilities, and since I chose to not install a printer, we skip that disk. So, here's disk four for you. Font's disk. That's disk number five. Disk five. So now there are two more disks. Disk 6 is desktop applications, and disk 7 is additional drivers, so not sure if it's going to need any of those. Well, yeah, I guess it does need disk number 6 now, the application disk. Just to note, these are all actually 720k disks and not 1.44 meg disks. Ooh, calculator, calendar, here we go. Just all the, um, the fun Windows 2 programs we could try to launch. Wait for this finish and installing. Notepad, there's paint. Yeah, here we go. All of our, all our fun stuff is uh, is being copied over. Reversey, that should be fun. We'll check that out when it's done. Okay, so apparently I turned off HiMem to run this installer, and now Windows wants to add HiMem. Um, I guess I can just let it update the config sys for me. It's fine, I'll just double check that it's right after this is done, so that's okay. And auto exec, yeah, go ahead and update that too. It's probably useful. There is stuff in the README, I don't really care about that. Continue. What does this do? It does take advantage of memory and smart drive. Uh, let's see what happens here. Um, I had smart drive enabled, but it was turned off when I turned off Hyman to run the installer, so let's see what it does. I wonder what's gonna happen. Oh, memory expansions. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a memory expansion board, I just have additional memory installed, so let's just see if it see what happens here. Never tried this. Alright. Oh, huh, okay. It needs utilities two, which is disk four. Pick up disk six. You find disk four. Well, here's how much memory I have, and it can use smart drive, so I guess this is okay. Everything is good, I suppose. Let's reboot the system like it wants me to. Take our disk out. Alright, now we're booting back into DOS. Hi Mem, load it again. Smart Drive is saying incorrect DOS version. That's weird. I don't know what version DOS this is. 622, that should work. But maybe that's because that's a Windows Smart Drive and not the DOS one or something. I don't know. Maybe it's alright. Let's just run Win and see what happens. Well, here's our, uh, here's our Windows. Looks like that works. A little hard to use without a, um, Got a mouse here, but it seems like everything is, is working here. So, about something fun. Where's 
Yeah, pain. Guess I can use mouse. I mean, the keyboard to draw stuff. I don't know mouse. I guess this is like in Etch a Sketch or something. I'm just using the keys to move around. Well, at least it works. File. Not mouse. Uh, file, exit. Don't want to save that. Let's navigate around some more. We got here. Dot executive. Version 2.11. And we have almost 400k memory free. What else, what else can I do here without a mouse? I can open up. I don't know, but now about reverse it looked like it was fun. Oof, guess I can just do this, move, mouse around with the cursor, let's go, let's go here. I'm not very good at this game, but maybe let's see if I can win. Oh, mine. No, it needs to stay red, not blue. Stop it, blue. Uh... This I can get this 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 I think I'm going to lose. Let's probably work on my strategy. No part. No reverse my bad. Yep, I think the computer beat me. I'm definitely going to lose. But do I quit? No, I must continue the game until it's over and I get my butt kicked. Let's just finish. I must pass. Oh, yeah, I guess I can't even go. So I pass. Pass. I lost. Woo. That was fun. But I got my butt kicked. Exit. And Windows system. Yes. Alright, well now that Windows is installed, let's see if we can get get a mouse set up and see if I can also get everything set up properly so it doesn't yell at me about smart drive and all that fun stuff, so let's do that. Alright, well maybe I broke something or didn't, but I um don't think I need smart drive in the config sys, just in the auto exec, so that incorrect DOS version went away, but now in Windows we get this my reconfiguration has been altered. Error. I don't know. I can deal with this later. I'm pretty sure Hymen is still enabled and stuff, so I'm not sure what's going on. Also, as you can see, I installed the mouse. All I need to do is plug in a serial mouse and then on Windows and figure it out. I didn't have to do like cute mouse or anything like that. Just launch Windows and it says, oh hey look, a mouse. So, click. Let's see what we got here. Luckily, Windows can see both of our drives. This D drive here being our compact flash card, which right now just has DOS Mint Audit, Commander Keen, Planet X3, and this game. Alright, this is a currently Mickey Mouse crosser puzzle game. I installed that here. This is a game I used to play as a kid that I had on. I think the game was on a 720k floppy disk, but all my save files were on 5 and a quarter inch floppy disk, so. That's neat. That'd be that. Let's see if I can launch it from side windows. Okay, yeah, this is a pit file, that's fine. Just launch the exit. Does that work? Does it want a floppy disk with my save on? Nope. Okay, good. I guess I, guess I can launch programs, right? I can launch DOS programs right from the windows. That's neat. And I think Windows is a little confused. Are we in Windows? Where are we? I think we're in a weird state here where Windows doesn't quite know what to do. Control Alt Delete always fixes that. Anyway, you've probably seen plenty of other videos of messing around with Windows 2 and all this other stuff, but 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get Windows 2 installed on the PS2 system and see if we can do some like networking between this system and that system. I noticed in Windows there's a terminal application which you can communicate over serial between the two systems and just send messages across or something. I don't know. Let's just mess around and see what we can do. All right, we've got our um, PS2 here and power it up and we'll just speed through the Windows install. It's not going to be anything different than was on the other machine. So just boot it up, run the setup off of disk one, and run through all the disks and get into Windows. PS2 here, and just plugging in a mouse, Windows Dumbat picked it up, and well, being a PS2, this is a PS2 mouse, and well, just skip past this memory error we saw before, and let's see what this says about Windows here. Memory free, the space free. Alright, well, now that we're all set up here, what I was talking about before was, looking here there is a little terminal application. Which I presume is some sort of like, early hyperterm or something. But, I imagine that I can use this to communicate with the other computer over some sort of serial line or something. I'm going to, I don't know, try that out and see what we can, we can do here look through all of these. I did... 1200 baht, I guess I'll just leave it like that. Do you want parity or is parity done? I think I want like this. Uh, is this right? I think that's fine. As long as I set it up the same way on the other system, that should be fine, right? Com1, I imagine, is the correct one here. I'll have, to use, I'll have to use COM2 with the other one, because COM1 for the mouse is going to go. And... I think connect's not going to do anything, right? I mean, it's no thing connected, so it's not going to not do anything, right? Let's disconnect. Let's get the machines set up and see if I can get them to connect to each other. Alright, so fishing around, I found a um, null modem cable. So we're going to get this installed between this system and the other 286, run the terminal on both of them, and uh, see if we can talk to each other. Alright, I got both machines running the terminal, both connected by a, a null modem cable, so let's just, uh, see what happens. We go on the PS2 here, and we slash it connect. Alright, get this connected. Now let's go on the other system here, the other 286, slash in connect. Are they connected to each other? No, I'm not getting any data. I mean, it's not really surprising. I don't really know what I'm doing here, but I figured this would work. Have to be. Oh, no, I don't want that. Uh, we are connected, right? What's that doing? No, not a no. lot. Oh. No, I don't want a phone. You want communication here. Maybe I did mess with these settings. Not really sure if they what they should be. So let's go over to the other system, and we can see that they're. Oh, there we go. But I changed this. This is on five bits. It should probably be eight. 
And everything else is the same. Okay. Let's get any data to the other system. I wonder why. Disconnect here. Yes. Disconnect here. Yes. So that didn't work. I wonder what else I can do to get this to work. Can we no. This is the right com port, right? Okay, yeah, so com one on this end is correct and com one on that end can be correct and disconnected by a you know modem. Maybe did you want a handshake on? Let's try that. I don't know if this is gonna do anything, but let's find out. Wait. I'm going to connect here. We're still not getting anything. Maybe I can't do this. I'm just thought you could, but. Maybe I can't. Well, this didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to, but maybe now I can try to connect this to a different system. We created our, or I told you I redid my media server, and that's got a serial port on it. So maybe I can connect one of these systems to that over serial and, and talk to it. That should work. I don't know why I can't make it, these two machines talk to each other, but maybe in another video I can try doing that over the Ethernet. It was the Ethernet ports, so I could do that in another video. Alright, well now I have the system connected to my server, which is running a serial host on it, so I should be able to connect that over serial. So we need to change this to 9600, that's what that's running at. 7 bits, or 8 and 1. Pretty sure none computer. Maybe this should be normal. I don't know. That's. Try that. Should connect, right? Give me something. Hmm. Why aren't we getting anything? This ain't no works. There is something on the other end here. Disconnect. Maybe I do need to put this on the modem. No, okay, because it is a computer on the other end. Shake. I don't think I need that on, but do I? Let's connect again. Huh. This is bothersome, because I know that there is something on the other end there. Let's quit this. I wonder maybe this window is being weird or can't talk to the serial boards, because I've done this in DOS, so let's do it in DOS. Well, I think I figured out what was going on with the um, serial port. So there's two 25-pin ports on here. One's male, one's female. Apparently the one that has the male pins on it is the serial port. So I was accidentally plugging the non-bottom cable into the parallel port. So that's why it wouldn't work. As you can see on the screen, I'm running a program called Kermit in MS-DOS. I'm connected to my media server, which is behind me right now, and once I type in my password, you can see that I'm connected to it over serial. So the serial on this thing does work, which makes me wonder if I could get it working now, talking to the 286 over serial. Let's try that out again now that I realize that I'm plugging into a serial port and not the parallel port. Okay, well turns out that when you um, plug into the serial port instead of the parallel port, you can actually send messages across. So I'm typing on the PS2 and you can see that it's appearing over on the other system. And if I type on this system, you get it appearing on the screen on the PS2. It's super cool that we have proper working serial ports now. I don't know what I can do with it. Maybe some multiplayer games support this. 
or maybe I can do other stuff with it, but it works. Well, my camera battery died, so I guess back to the old way of, of recording. But anyway, I think that's up for this video. We got Windows set up on Huey286 systems, and we got them to talk to each other over serial. Like I said, maybe in another video, I'll try to do that same type of test, except over Ethernet, since they both have Recom Ethernet ports in it. I need to learn how to set up the packet driver in DOS, and I don't know if Windows 2 can do that networking, so those Ethernet tests might actually wind up being in, in DOS. I might do like Windows, you know, 311 or networking or whatever in order to do it in Windows, but these are 286s, so they can't run Windows 3, so that would have to be on another machine, like 386 or 486 or something. But anyway, I think that's it for this video, so thanks for watching.